Today we feature another 1968 Hot Wheels Redline Corvette. Now I've already had a few of these on the channel, but this one's kind of special. It's for a viewer. Now this was sent to me quite a while ago, but I didn't have the parts to complete it. So I told Bobby, which is the individual that sent it to me, if he sent the parts, I'd go ahead and do the restoration for free. As you can see, it is definitely missing the hood. It needs new wheels, paint, but the glass is okay. So we've got the casting. It is missing a hood pin, as you see here, so I'm going to have to glue something in place. And now we finally have the goods to finish this. I've got the red line paint, set of reproduction wheels, and we have the hood, which I had sent him the parts he would need because they do make two different hoods for this casting, a US and a Hong Kong model. We also have some reproduction rivets. So we're gonna start by drilling this out like we do all of them and we will strip the paint and go from there. I'm gonna use this watch vise that I use in a lot of the videos to secure the Corvette. Brought this up a few other times, but I'm gonna bring it up again. They are the post on the Hot Wheels red lines or the original red lines. They're very small. Now most castings I will just center punch and drill them out. But on a lot of the red lines, I like to grind the mushroom portion of the post off, remove the base, and then drill them out. The reason why I do this, sometimes these posts aren't exactly center, and then sometimes my mark isn't exactly center, which causes me to blow that out. This way I can grind it off, see the orientation of the post, and then drill it out, so I won't end up blowing out the side. So we're gonna grind these ones off. And this is the style of bit I'm going to use. And you can see I've got most of that ground away. I'm going to do the same thing to the front and then we'll pop off the base. Now hopefully we have enough removed. If not, we can just grind some more. There we go. Now since we've used this tool, we've also created a little bit of a concave or a divot. It'll be much easier to drill out the center portion now. Now before I go ahead and drill, I can choose to flatten these a little bit because they do need to be flattened in order to go back on the base. Or I could drill them out now and then flatten them. Or in this case, we're going to try the machinist bit that I've been using quite a bit. It will start our small hole as well as get rid of some of that mushrooming on the actual post. Next we're going to take the .050 bit and then drill a little bit further because I don't need to actually tap this one we're going to use those reproduction rivets. So I just need a hole. That's what she said. We'll flatten it out a little bit. Now it's time to strip the paint off. Right now I'm out of the aircraft stripper and I don't plan on buying any more because it's missing some of the key components that it used to have so it doesn't work very effective. So I'm going to be using this Jasco product. I use this quite a bit with the woodworking but I've never tried it on a Hot Wheels. I've got about half a can left, so we should be good for quite some time. It actually appears to be fairly effective. It's already coming off on the brush. bad at all. Notice under the paint it's nice and 
shiny or somewhat. These red lines were kind of crude. From a distance they look really good, but when you have an actual original red line and you see it up close, you can see all the imperfections in the the actual casting as well as the paint. They weren't painted very well. I'm sure most of the other guys can attest to that that have restored or stripped a red line or if they even have them. They just don't look that great. They're not like the cars of the red line club that you find today with the Spectre Flame that just look phenomenal. They are nowhere near that. Now it says 15 minutes so we'll let it sit for 15 minutes. Now that all the paint is stripped off the body, you can easily see the exposed area. You can see I still have a few little nooks and crannies to get here, and I'm actually going to use the wire wheel for those. This will also give the surface a little bit of a polish, and I'm hoping to get by without electroplating this car, just for that one area. But I may have to do that in the end. Now, as you can see, there's a fairly decent shine over the entire body, just from using the wire wheel. I still think I'm going to electroplate this, and the reason being unevenness on the sides, everywhere. Now, this was already present, especially in the back here. I could see all of this in the original casting under the paint. So I'm going to clean this up real nice with some degreaser and then start the electroplating process. I must say, as far as zinc plating, this is the most even I've ever had one of these castings come out. Very nice. Now I've just got to clean this up a little bit. It's actually fairly smooth as well, but I'll do a little wet sanding and polishing, and hopefully we'll get this looking nice and shiny. By the way, if you hear a lot of weird noise in the background, my 3D printer is running nonstop right now. I'm printing n95 mask so i work in the dental industry i'm not a dentist sorry but i'm printing a bunch of masks right now so that's what you hear in the background i'm going to do a little bit of wet sanding on this it's actually fairly smooth typically when i do zinc plating it's kind of rough but the, again this is nice and smooth i'm going to be using these sanding pads i've gone over them before they're various grits up to i believe it's 3,000, I don't recall, but I've got them numbered. I use these for woodworking projects on the lathe when I'm smoothing out pens, that kind of thing. I've got several different packs of these just laying everywhere. I've got a pack in the garage, a pack by the lathe, and uh, they're, they're excellent. So we're gonna start with, this one's fairly abrasive. I'm not gonna start with that. We are gonna start with what I like to call number six, I guess. I don't remember the grid on that. I will post a link below the video in the description to Amazon where you can buy these. They are lifesavers. I'm actually just going to try some steel wool first. I think that'll actually do the trick. Yeah, I don't even need to sand. I'm going to continue getting all this off and we'll see what it looks like and see if we have to give it another electroplating bath. I don't believe so though. I think we're going to be good with this. Now the engine area, I'm actually using a little bit more abrasive just because I could not get the little nooks and crannies, but it looks nice and shiny now because that did also get electroplated. You can see that's what the electroplating looks like on the bottom and here we are after just the steel wool. Looks pretty good. Now, a lot of times I will actually use Mother's Polish and a polishing wheel to shine this all up, but it's really shiny enough, so I don't really need to do that. I don't want to really overdo it. I want to make it more like original. This is actually more than likely better than original, so we're just going to leave it as is. I'm going to clean this up. Once we get it cleaned up, we will find out what we're going to do with that missing hood pin. And then once that's done, we can shoot some Spectre Flame on there.
Now what I've done here is use some 6040 solder with some flux and a brass tube. I've got it attached where the hood pin will go and I'll just simply cut this down to size. It holds up the car. It should hold up okay. Got the hood fitted and it seems to close fairly nicely. Not all that pretty on the bottom, but it does work. Now some of these reproduction parts, especially the hoods, leave a little bit to be desired. They're made out of a little bit of a softer metal. If you notice, it's even a different color. And I'm gonna try to clean up this edge right here. I've already sanded it down a bit in the front just to match the contours. And it's not turning out too bad. I'm using these small sanding sticks. This one has just been cut down. And the reason why I'm using these, a file's a little bit too aggressive because the metal on this actual hood is very, very soft. Actually softer than the casting metal. This hood is not perfect. It will open and close but every once in a while, the original pin will come undone. You can see I added a little bit of solder to that, but again, this metal is so soft, it started kind of melting the actual hood, so I couldn't go any further. I just wanted to get a little bit in there to get a bite. Those pins, you can't bend them, they're not long enough, so I just added a little dab of solder to prevent it from just popping out, because the original pin, it would just, as soon as you open it, it would just fly out but it seems to be holding okay. Now, if you twist it, you can pop it back out. I haven't had to replace a lot of pins. On most casting, the actual pin is part of the hood. On this particular Corvette, it's part of the body, and some of the body was missing there. So I've done the best that I could do, which I think is hopefully good enough, and it, it does function. Now, every once in a while, it will get kind of cattywampus, you'll have to push it down in order to close it because it wants to still pop out of the one side. Actually, oddly enough, it's not popping out of the side that I did, but just this other side. I'm also going to do a little bit of wet sanding just to blend in any of these scratches where I was kind of adjusting the hood. I'm going to clean this up, get it all nice and washed off, and then we're going to paint. All right, the body is painted. I'm just waiting for it to dry or cure, at least enough to reassemble. So now I'm going to work on the base. It's fairly dirty, and obviously it needs new wheels or these reconditioned, but they're kind of beyond that. So I'm just gonna cut them off, and he did send me new wheels. But this base is a little bit different than any I've ever seen, and I'm by far a Redline's expert. I mean, there's guys out there that know all kinds of stuff. I've just restored quite a few of these, but I've never ran into this before. So these axles, they are totally different than any red line I've ever seen. Usually a red line, it will connect right here. One side will have a little zigzag. The other side will be somewhat straight, and then you can pop them out. These are actually part of the base. And they are, I mean, I would have to grind these nubs off to get these axles out, and I'm not... I'm not going to do that because I'm not sure if I can get them to stay back in. Maybe with some solder or some glue, but I don't really want to do that. I've done three or four of these Corvettes. Again, never ran in this and plenty of other red lines and I've never seen this. So I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm sure one of you know and have ran into this and I'm just an idiot. But what I'm going to do is I do want to dip this whole base into the acid, the acid water mix, just to clean this up. But I'm going to cut these wheels off. I was going to do that anyway. And, but I'm hoping that the acid will not affect the little white bearings. I don't think it will. I believe I've actually done it before. As long as I don't hold it in there too long. But I don't think it'll affect them at all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off. If these were in better condition, I would try to save them. You may notice in some videos I pop them off and in others I just cut them off. Uh, it kind of depends on if I've tried to get them off and they're just too hard to get off. I don't want to mess up that bearing because you cannot buy just that little bearing, at least nowhere that I've found. And these are even finding to be a little difficult to cut off. Yeah, these are, jeez, these are a joy. Good Lord. There's one. Usually one cut right near the bearing will get it. 
like that. While that's doing its magic, right now I'm actually printing the inserts for the mask that I've been making. Just gotta clean up some of the residue from the glue on the base. And those will be done and gotta make another batch. That should do it. Now we just gotta clean it up and uh, see what it looks like. And it looks somewhat better. Now we will so now we're going to take the brush for the wire. Jesus. Now we're going to take the wire wheel. I'm not cutting any of this out because I just don't feel like it. We're going to take the wire wheel and we're going to clean it up a little bit. Slow it down a little bit too. There. Not too shabby. We've got our repop wheels. I'm gonna put these on first before we straighten out the axles. Now some of the Corvettes had a small front wheel and a medium size rear. This particular one had medium size all around and that's what I have here. Um, just figured we'd keep it exactly how I got it. Although I think it looks a little better with the smaller one up front, but again, they were available in both varieties. I think it depended on if you've got the Hong Kong or US, I'm not sure, but we're just keeping this one as I received it, whether that was right or wrong. I'm gonna take the handy dandy little axle straightener tool and just give them a little bend. You can also do it by hand. Now one thing you can use this tool for, and I think I've described this in another video, is a lot of times when you push the wheel on, it doesn't go all the way over the bearing. A little slit, you can put it in the slot and push it all the way through. I'll see how much less is sticking out. In order to come back, we've got to paint down here or use a marker, a little black, and then we'll put a little red on the taillights. We've got to clean the interior and polish up the windshield a little bit and then hopefully this bad boy will be dry and we can reassemble and we'll be done and we can get this video up tonight Sunday May 3rd I'm hoping you may see this Monday May 4th let's cross our fingers and we're back got the lights charged up so we should be ready to go unfortunately didn't get this video out on May 3rd because it's May 4th what I did do off camera as I painted the bottom bumper just like it was originally and I also added a little red to the taillights just a little tiny bit there so the base is essentially done now we need to clean the interior which it's actually not that bad and we need to remove and polish this windshield glass there we go So first, we're just gonna try some soapy water, a brush, and see what kind of result we get from that. And the printer is still running, if you hear that wonderful noise going around in the background there. So let's, it's got a few scratches on there. This would help if I dried it off all the way. We're gonna see if we can polish those out this is the stuff right here. Just take a little dab. Put it on the inside and outside because I'm not sure exactly where those scratches are at this point. We're going to take our Dremel and put it on a rather low speed. One thing one thing I don't like about this Dremel, it always starts like in the middle. There's no way to make it start on a lower speed, at least not that I know of. To be honest, I haven't really looked that closely. This Plastex also works really well on like headlight restoration. It's actually what comes in the Meguiar's kit. This one's not, it comes with a smaller bottle, but it's the same exact stuff. Now that's a pretty deep scratch. So even with clear coat, you're still gonna notice that. 
but I think that's probably good enough. And real quick, I'm going to show you the repair. It's right here. I actually painted a little bit of the underside to kind of disguise it. You can see the solder build up. It's uh, certainly not perfect under, but it does open, close pretty nicely. Before we reassemble, real quick, I forgot to mention, this is the black pen that I use for the bumper area. I have an Amazon link located in my little Amazon store for those. And then for the tail lights, it's just a red Sharpie, just a fine tipped red Sharpie. They work perfect for that kind of detail. Here we are back. We've got all the key components here. We've got the body, we've got the base, the interior, the glass, and then we have our reproduction rivets. Now one of them, I did cut down just a little bit because the front, that post doesn't go all the way, it's not deep enough, so you need to cut it down a little bit so when you actually glue these in place, it'll be flush with the base. So I'm going to start by reattaching the glass to the interior. We'll flip the car upside down, put the interior and all those goods into place. I'm going to add the glue before I actually add the base. I'm just using some of the Starbond medium. Now I'm not going to use any activator on this because I just want it to nicely cure. I don't want to get all that activator spray. And I'm just using a little dental uh, flossing pick. You can get these, I mean, I get them from work, but you can get them from Meyer or Walmart or just about anywhere. I usually show close-ups of this, but I'm not in a close-up mood. I may zoom it in on the edit. There we go. One new looking red line. Now overall I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. The hood especially, I'm kind of surprised that the soldering has worked this well. It feels pretty solid. Now if you tilt it at an angle, actually on the existing pen it sometimes does not want to close properly so you gotta open it kind of even and just make sure it's flat when you close it. The wheels, I do prefer the smaller wheel in front and the medium in back rather than these all medium, but that's what the car had, so that's what it's leaving with. If you'd like to purchase any of the tools that I use in this video, be sure to check out the links. They're located below the video in the description. I have a link to my Amazon page, pretty much everything I use, the Starbond, the tweezers, the paint pens, the vice, everything is there. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to post those below. And as always, thanks for watching.